Okay. Can you share? Can you see my screen now? Hello. Uh, it's not clear. Can it? Is it clear uh, now? I saw it. I saw it a while ago, but now it's not showing. Is it is it clear now? Uh, no. Hello. No, it's not. No. Uh, do you, uh, can you put your PowerPoint like the first page we saw it a while ago? The first slide we saw it. Yeah. Can you see it now? Uh, uh, no, we cannot see it. No. Okay, one second. I will try again. Is it visible? Um, Hello? For me, no, it's not visible. I don't know of the others. No, it's not the presentation scene. No, it's not visible. It's, it's not seen? No. Okay, one second. Let me try again. Uh, can you just, just one second, huh? One second. Take your time, take your time. Yeah, now we see it. Okay. Is it okay? Yes, no, now it's okay. Okay. So, uh, sorry for the delay. Um, as uh, Dr. Zairani said, um, this is a hot topic uh, since last three to four uh, years, the single use versus uh, reusable flexible uratoscopy. Uh, what is the current status of, the, uh, of this uh, particular topic? So, I'm going to uh, talk about this. A little bit about myself, I'm Dr. Yogesh Bhandari, uh, consultant urologist working in LLH Hospital, uh, a unit of VPS Healthcare in Abu Dhabi. It's one of the private healthcare. We have a dedicated urology department and uh, working three uh, full-time urologists around the clock with assistants. We perform about 100 to 120 cases per month, and uh, including all the endourology and uh, other uh, uh, specialties also. And out of which about two thirds of the cases are endourology. So major of our work is endourology, uh, which includes uh, rigid and uh, flexible uretroscopy, ESWL, PCNLs, and uh, endoscopy for the prostate and uh, TURBT, et cetera. We perform about 15 to 20 cases per month of a flexible uretroscopy, which I think uh, is a good number uh, to, to, to start with. So to uh, start my today's topic, uh, there is a significant, as we all of know, there is a significant improvement in flexible uretroscopy, 
and uh, it has become a, become a main uh, modality of a treatment in upper tract patholo upper urinary tract pathologies especially stone disease uh, it is minimally invasive at the same time it is effective and uh, that's why it is, it has become an alternative to eswl as well as pcnl and uh, as we saw in the uh, last uh, lecture uh, eu eu has uh, given a grade 1 recommendation for the stones between 1 to 2 cm for the flexible ureteroscopy however there is always a concern about the cost of the procedure talking about reusable flexible ureteroscopes uh, these ureteroscopes are there in the market since last few decades all of us we do a uh, flexible ureteroscopy using reusable one however the major two limitations of this reusable flexible ureteroscopes are the cost of purchase that is expensive to acquire and have limited longevity the durability of the scope these are the two main limitations which has not yet addressed completely yet and also we cannot forget the cost of the laser machine cleaning and sterilization process and other disposable instruments including the guide wires the access sheet the uh, wires etc another important issue with the reusable flexible ureteroscope is the damage to the scope if suppose if any of the case if the damage happens to the scope there is a long delay for its replacement and repair and therefore the, in the department it becomes obligatory to have more than one scope Uh, so that the surgical problem is not interrupted because of the damage of the scope to take care of this basic problems of uh, reusable flexible scope single use flexible ureteroscope was introduced uh, uh, about 8 uh, to 10 9 9 years back in principle these disposable ureteroscopes eliminate the high cost of the reusable scopes and repair so the major limitation of the reusable scope is taken care by the single use scopes it also abolishes the theoretical risk of cross infection i'm i'm stressing the theoretical risk because i'm going to come to them later later on and need for sterilization process process so we don't require sterilization and uh, uh, process for this single use scopes also another advantage is the disposable scope allow more torque into the instrument during a stone treatment without there is a ferrous breakage particularly for the low porous polar stones we can be a little more aggressive with the disposable stone scopes where the there is always a uh, uh, fear of breakage to the uh, reusable scopes now when i have to compare two entities a uh, two scopes i have to have a set of uh, questionnaire on which i can compare these two so i found this six question relevant for this uh, comparison between the reusable and disposable scopes so i'm going to talk uh, each one of them and uh, review of literature and a little bit of discussion about them and then at the end we will see as uh, dr zarani said is the dust settling yet or not yet so these six questions are first is the stone free rate and complication rate uh, there is any difference between the two scopes is the operative time different between the two scopes does the surgeon experience has any relevance to these two scopes is the longevity of the or durability of the scopes is different between digital and flexible ureteroscopes also between the new and refurbished that is repaired scopes does sterilization method has any influence on the longevity of the uh, uh, reusable scope and what is the what is the stone impact burden and surgical instrumentation on the ureteroscope longevity so we will go through each of these question one by one with the review of literature and at the end we'll see what is the conclusion coming to the first question to be answered the stone free and complication rates there's a good uh, paper in the urology 2013 wherein they uh, the, the author compared uh, reusable digital versus fiber optic flexible ureteroscopes and the results were similar in terms of accessibility to the entire collecting system and stone free rate 98 versus 96 uh, 98 versus 96% the drawback of this was in both but the comparison was done only between the reusable scope there was no disposable scope in this uh, particular study and the complication rates were similar between the two modalities another paper from uh, another paper in the uh, in the journal of urology compared the reusable uh, versus disposable scopes they prospect uh, prospectively compared clinical outcomes of polyscope polyscope was a reusable scope introduced in 2011 which i think no more is there in the in the market now with a reusable olympus fiber optic scope your f53 p5 scope the single session stone free rate post operatively between uh, polyscope and urf was 76 and 69% which is favoring more towards disposable scope disposable uh, scopes gave a little more uh, higher percentage of single, uh, stone free rate however for the lower porous stones they found out that the reusable scope was better probably according to the author uh, better visibility and better maneuverability these are the reasons why the lower porous stone clearance with the reusable scope was scope was better complication was complication rate was compared so the the conclusion from this uh, study was that the use of uh, single use device performed well and the findings suggest that the new disposable scopes 
are not inferior to reusable scopes in terms of clinical outcomes. So the conclusion was both of them are more or less similar in stone free rate and complication rates. So to discuss this topic further, if there was any difference in the stone free rate between the reusable and disposable scope, there was uncertainty between choosing. But if it is same, then I think uh, it is a surgeon choice and institution choice which one to have in their uh, department. The first generation disposable scopes had been tested and suboptimal surgical outcomes precluded their incorpor incorporation into a uh, daily surgical practice. Um, probably because the larger diameter, the maneuverability was not good, the optics were not good. However, now the newer scopes, the newer disposable scopes provide similar maneuver maneuverability and clinical efficacy to reusable scopes with equal low complication rates. And now I think it's a part of the, now uh, all the urology uh, department worldwide have this uh, disposable scope in their armamentarium, including our department. Uh, complication rates, perioperative complication rate is always, the urinary tract infection always remains a feared hurdle for after uh, flexible urotroscopy. The initial untreated urinary tract infection, placement of double gestance before the flexible urotroscopy and surgical technique in terms of uh, not using excess sheet or high pressure uh, while doing uh, a flexible urotroscopy. These are the few re common reasons why postoperative urinary tract infection can happen. In one study in France, the acute pyelonephritis rate was about 2.4%, which is quite high. However, limited studies have shown that the inferior rate of urinary tract infection after flexible urotroscopy with employment of single-use device. So the marketing of single-use device, which shows, which they say that the urinary tract infection was less as compared to dispos uh, as compared to reusable one, as uh, there, there is a limited study according to that, and therefore. The initial fear of cross-infection with reusable scopes is not supported by the existing literature. The reusable scope is one of the uh, one of the argument for reusable scope is cross-infection because of the limited sterilization. However, there are there is uh, not enough literature evidence to support this particular issue, and therefore this is the only potential benefit from single-use scope which has yet to be proved. So. Whether single-use scope really prevents urinary tract infection as compared to reusable one is not yet proved completely according to the literature. Coming to the second uh, point of discussion is the operative time difference between the single-use and reusable flexible urotroscope. So there are many studies. I have just jotted out three studies wherein all the studies have found out that the operative time was less with digital, digital flexible urotroscope, whether it was a reusable or whether it was a uh, one-time uh, one uh, scope. Uh, in first study, uh, the operative time was about 20% less with a similar stone free rate. In second study, where they compared the litho view, which is a, uh, a one-time scope or a single-use scope versus fiber optic scope, uh, the operative time was 10 minutes less. And another study was also showing about 20 minutes less time. The, so the operative time was with the digital uh, scopes were less. Uh, definitely, operative time should be accounted for choosing an ideal scope for the institution. If any scope is giving a shorter operative time, uh, it is better to have that scope in the urology armamentarium. The reason for shorter operative time with digital scopes is according to the literature is better view of the digital scope. And therefore, urologists can perform safe and effective procedure achieving comparable stone free rates uh, as compared to the fiber optic scopes. Another issue with the reusable scope is the processing time. That is, once we do the urotroscopy with the reusable scope, we have to send it for the processing in terms of cleaning and in terms of uh, sterilization. So again, when we get the scope back, it is not possible to post the cases, three or four cases in the same time, which, is, uh, which, which demands the institution to have at least two or three scopes more if it is a real high volume center which is doing flexible urotroscopy. And this particular problem is not, not faced by the uh, single use uh, single use scopes wherein you dispose of the uh, scope after the first procedure and the next one is handy with your for the next case third question to be answered is does the surgeon experience impact the clinical and econ uh, and the economic outcomes of a, in an individualized manner between single use and the reusable scope so what is the surgeon's experience between the two uh, two scopes there has been a lot lot of uh, talk about ureter use of ureteral access sheet in the urotroscopy all of all of uh, endourologists, uh, I think, would agree with me that uh, use of a ureteral access sheet or having a ureteral access sheet in the flexible ureteroscopy eases the procedure. Uh, we feel better when we do a ureteral access sheet because of the re-entry possible, because the intrapelvic pressure remains less, because the intravisation is less. So uh, this paper, which goes 20 years back in Journal of Urology, about 2001, where Glenn Preminger, he compared all the, uh, all the procedures with, with or without ureteral access sheet 
concluded that in terms of scope instrumentation surgical techniques the use of ureteral access sheath aids in prolonging the scope uh, act, uh, longevity and i think logically it is correct if there is a ureteral access sheath definitely the scope lasts longer as compared to if we just backload the scope on the on the guide wire however at the same time there is no well defined prospective randomized trial to provide a strong evidence that the durability of a deflection unit of the flexible ureteroscope is preserved during this technique that is when we when we place the ureteroscope in the ureter the distal deflection unit whether whether it is preserved with using uh, ureteral access sheath or uh, without ureteral access sheath is not well uh, not well there in the literature yet the previous study strongly suggests that there is increased damage to the flexible scope if the patient has uh, lower polar ure urethelial tumors stagon stones of course uh, nobody would do stagon stone uh, 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 ureteroscopy for the stagon but large burden stones stone in the lower pole with more than 10 mm if the lower pole infundibulum is narrow and if the infundibular pelvic angle is less than 30 to 50% this is well known uh, fact in the literature in this situation in all the situation probably single use device would be more cost effective as compared to the reusable scope because the reusable scope there is always a chance of damage in these scenarios there is another important uh, issue is single surgeon versus multiple surgeon use of the flexible ureteroscopes uh, all of us uh, we know that if the flexible ureteroscope is tackled by a single surgeon the longevity is more as compared to the multi uh, pulse surgeon use however there are uh, in the department there are many surgeons we are uh, using the same scope at the same time in some institutions like in our institution the scope is being shared between the two uh, two facilities so it's not only the operative but even while handling while uh, while travel the scope can be damaged so uh, it is well known fact that if the single surgeon use is there of the flexible ureteroscope the longevity with longevity is more however there are limited studies one study which has which has uh, uh, studied the use of flexes c digital flexible ureteroscope with a single surgeon has proved that if the single surgeon uses this scope the long scope longevity with the single scope lasting for about 159 cases i think this is far fetched 159 or 160 cases with a with a single scope is little far fetched uh, but yes single uh, use of a scope uh, improves the longevity longevity of the flexible ureteroscope as we know that the surgical skill evolve with the practice and residency training is an important aspect to consider when evaluating a flexible ureteroscope to acquire which scope to acquire a single study suggests that learning curve is shorter with the disposable digital scope though it was not specifically designed for that and for that reason purchase of a single use flexible ureteroscope might be considered in a training center uh, those who are having a residency training definitely they would like to have a single use scope because uh, there is a less chance of damage to the reusable scopes coming to the fourth question to be answered is the longevity of the digital and optical uh, flexible ureteroscope is different and also if there is a difference between new and refurbished scope uh, refurbished scope uh, this question i think is not is not relevant to the uh, reusable scope because uh, we are we are talking about the longevity of the reusable uh, i mean it is not uh, relevant to the uh, disposable scope we are just talking to the longevity of the reusable scopes so what the literature says this is the important uh, uh, paper from uh, urology Uh, which is cited at many of the articles improving the durability of digital flexible scopes and the author have found out that the digital ureteroscope is used 21 times before requiring repair while the average fiber optic ureteroscope is only used 6 to 15 times before going back to the manufacturer so on an average any reusable flexible ureteroscopes uh, last for about 20 to 25 cases on an average there are instances instances like in last paper the 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 scope lasted for uh, more than 100 cases whereas we have experience and all of you must have experience that the uh, scope may uh, may break in first five cases also but uh, according to this paper the average life of a flexible ureteroscope the reusable flexible ureteroscope is about 20 to 25 cases another study wherein permanent digital scopes uh, where, where i mean the the longevity of the scopes were discussed the permanent digital scope had a slightly longer longevity mean 27 as compared to fiber optic flexible ureteroscope mean 24 cases uh, they found out that the digital scope have a little uh, uh, longevity more than the uh, fiber optic scope and in comparison average longevity of a refurbished that is a repaired scope is only 3 to 11 cases this is logical i think because once you repair it uh, it is not the original one and the number of cases you can perform with the refurbished uh, uh, scopes are definitely going to be less as compared to the original scope 
So in a modern series with a single use flexible scopes, the resilience of the equipment was proved to be adequate even for a longer cases. Uh, the durability, the resilience, even if we with a single use scope, if we last in the ureter for more than one hour, still the, there is no breakage of the uh, flexible uh, the the single use scopes. However, in one European multicentric study, uh, there was two failures with a lithium view, which is a, a disposable scope, five percent, which demanded the surgeon to use for uh, permanent scope to finish this case. However, these are just a case studies, but I think most of the endourologists would agree with me that um, most of the flexible uh, single use scopes last longer and uh, there is no requirement of any new scopes in between the procedure. Coming to the fixed first, fifth question to be answered, does sterilization method influences permanent uh, scope long uh, longevity? Again, here disposable scope, uh, scopes uh, scores better because there is no question of any sterilization method method for disposable. We are talking about a reusable scope uh, sterilization method. Uh, it has been found out that the damage to the flexible ureteroscope happens not only during the operative time, but about seven to twenty-two percent of the cases it may occur outside the operative room during the processing and storage and sterilization process. Uh, there are many sterilization uh, uh, procedures which are described for the flexible ureteroscope. Each, I think, institution has their own protocol for sterilization of the instrument. Uh, basically, broadly, there are two ways how we can sterilize the flexible scopes, reusable scopes. One is chemical sterilization and other ways, other one is heat sterilization. The chemical sterilization includes Cydex, uh, which is 2.4% glutaraldehyde, whereas other, uh, 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 the heat sterilization includes teres and sterard. Uh, we in our institute uh, use uh, something called as Parasef, uh, which is again a chemical sterilization. Uh, and uh, it is again, uh, the scopes are dipped for 30 to 40 minutes in the room temperature, followed by rinse in the water. And so that uh, we can use it for the next case. It has been found out in a few of the studies, there is no much literature about the sterilization of the uh, flexible ureteroscope, but it has been found out that the scopes which are sterilized with the chemical dis disinfectants, they last longer as compared to the other method of sterilization. Coming to the sixth question to be answered, what is the impact of stone burden on su and uh, surgical instrumentation on ureteroscopic longevity? As we know that there are several surgical and patient factors that might affect the stone three rate morbid uh, morbidity and also ureteroscopic longevity. Surgeon factors include inadvertent finding of the firing of the laser inside the scopes, lower pol uh, lower polar stone reloca relocation. That is, if you want, uh, somebody is want want to relocate the stone from lower pole to others other uh, calyces, and use of uh, ureteral axis shape. These are the well-known factors which can affect the, uh, these are surgeon factors which can affect the scope longevity. There is one study which has shown that the ureteral access sheath, miniaturized nit nitinol basket, and small laser fibers, this all minimizes the strain placed on the ureteroscope during the procedure, ultimately increasing the flexible ureteroscopic longevity. One more study uh, has found out that the stone size, long infundibulum, and infundibulum pelvic angle less than 30, then negatively affect the stone three rate. If somebody has this, then they, uh, the, the stone three rate is definitely less. However, stone location is not important in this study because most of the time what we do is if it's a stone which is there in the lower pole, we try to put it in the desired calyx. And therefore stone location in this study is not a negative finding in this particular study. If the lower pole stone is larger than the infundibulum, there are many times it happens that the stone in the lower pole is larger than the infundibulum. It may not, and it may not allow the repositioning of the stone, and the surgeon has to perform laser lithotripsy in situ, and this definitely reduces the uh, the longevity of the ureteroscopes. Although most of the studies support that the stone-free rates are similar for the lower pole and non-lower pole stones, there is an increasing evidence that there is correlation between the technical difficulty of the procedure and higher incidence of ureteroscopic malfunction. We all know that the lower polar stones are a little difficult as compared to other and there is always technical difficulty in, in, in performing the ureteroscopy, flexible ureteroscopy for lower polar stone, particularly larger low, low, ureter, um, lower polar stones. In one study by Bagley, uh, he has found out that mean deflection of 140 degree angle might be required to allow the tip of flexible ureteroscope to reach the lower pole calyx. In another study, it has been reported that in situ fragmentation of the lower pole calcula is not possible in about 25% of the cases because of the reduced ureteroscope deflection by the optical fiber. The scope may get deflected when, the, there is the, when there is no fiber or where there is no, no basket inside. But when we put the fiber, there's about 25% chance that it may not reach to the stone. And I think mm, this is a day-to-day -day, uh, experience of all our endourologists. So the combination of aggressive active deflection and simultaneous passage of the holmium laser, it stresses the fiber optic system and results in fiber breakage. This is also a well-known fact. There is one study wherein almost 96% of the cases they have found out that there is some damage 
to the scope after the lower, pol uh, uh, lower polar uh, stone extraction. And in this study, the author stated that the steep infant developed pelvic angle, the, which is less than 50 degrees, it was confirmed in uh, by RGP, retropervic, uh, uh, retrograde pylogram, in over half of the cases. And the extreme flexion of the tip to reach the low pole uh, of the kidney, especially trying to reach the ventral calyx of the kidney, could play a scope, uh, could, could play a role in the scope damage mechanism. So all these, uh, when we uh, answer all these questions about the uh, comparison between the, uh, between the reusable and single use scopes, let us uh, have a little more information about the uh, single scope, uh, what, is, what, is, what, what they have to say. So as we know, single, uh, the reusable scopes are there in the market for last maybe about three to four decades with various advancement in the, in the optics and fiber optic system. However, the single use scopes are not that long. The first single use scope was launched in the market in 2011, which was polyscope. The first scope was a polyscope. However, because of the many factors, it, was, it, it didn't uh, turn out to be really well for most of the urologists. So it went off and then the next one was a LithoView by Boston Scientific, which was launched in about Jan uh, 2016, followed immediately by the Pusen, which was 3011 model. Uh, I personally have used this uh, model, which was about, which is I think semi-rigid model when the shaft was semi-rigid and only the deflection was uh, uh, was a flexible, but it was not as good as to uh, operate with a total uh, a total flexible like LithoView. However, in 2017, they came up with uh, another um, modification of this particular this thing, uh, Pusen 3022, which was completely flexible scope. And I think this has changed uh, most of the flexible urotroscopies uh, in, in, the, in the world. And along with that, there are, there are many other companies that have come up with uh, uh, various uh, uh, diameter uh, single-use flexible urotroscopes. Uh, these are the, the different specifications for all the single-use urotroscopes, including LithoView, Fusion, Neoflex. Um, the main drawback of single-use scope is larger diameter. And most of them has 9.5 and 9 French uh, diameter to start with. Therefore, uh, some, uh, many, most of the times it becomes difficult to place this scope uh, um, without a pre-stenting uh, of the patients. And uh, ureteral access sheet also requires a little larger 10 oblique 12. However, um, however uh, I think recently Fusion has launched 7.5 French ureteroscope and this uh, problem I think will be circumvented by that. Uh, working channels are all good, 3.5 range. The deflection is very good in uh, all the single scopes, uh, more than 270 degree, in fact, 285 degrees for the fusion. And uh, all we know that um, they perform well in terms of deflection. And the digital technology uh, is also, uh, that also gives a good optical system. So coming to the deflection part of the uh, flexible ureteroscope, single use scope, the ability of flexible ureteroscope to deflect is critical for intrarenal procedures, especially important when attempting the lower pole calculi. The deflection of the ureteroscope was tested in 10 different conditions, uh, empty working channels with uh, fiber, without fiber. And the conclusion was that the deflection ability of a single use scopes is comparable or sometimes superior to that of current reusable ureteroscopes. So the deflection is um, good with the single use scopes. This is a single paper by Scotland wherein uh, he did like he used three scopes in the same patient in the same kidney if you can see the uh, the images and he found out that despite finding of a superior deflection of the lithoview in in vitro studies deflection of both single use devices and flexes was similar even in the low, lower pole so what i have found in my personal uh, practice is that deflection is not a problem with the single use scope at all and uh, they they fare i think comparable with the reusable scopes how about irrigation Adequate irrigation is essential part of the urotorino uh, flexible urotroscopy. All of you know it allows improved visualization of the urinary tract as the irrigation serves as a mean for clear any blood, urine, debris from the urotroscopy views. Um, uh, again, this uh, there are many papers in the literature uh, comparing the uh, irrigation uh, channels and their flow rates, and all are comparable about 40, 40, 52, 40. And uh, the conclusion was that the single use urotroscopes are comparable or superior to the reusable models evaluated with respect to irrigation flow rates. So nowhere they're less than the reusable in, in terms of uh, irrigation. How about the vision? How about the optical properties? I think most of most talked subject is vision that the reusable like particularly digital scopes have better vision than the, than the reusable scope, uh, than the single use scopes. Clear visibility is one of the most important factor in flexible ureteroscopes, and visibility is largely depend upon the optical properties of the ureteroscopes. The optical properties more important for flexible ureteroscopes include image resolution, distortion, color representation, and field and depth of view. 
now there are many studies again in the literature uh, which uh, which compares the field of region and all these parameters as compared to reusable scopes uh, and what they have found out that uh, there are many discrepancies in various studies investigating the optical parameters of uh, different single use scopes however the lithoview and other other uh, fusen and other all uh, uh, single use scopes they demonstrate image, image resolution that is at least comparable uh, with the contemporary reusable uniroscopes they may not be reaching to the digital scopes but it is comparable the vision is comparable image distortion and color representation were also generally similar now these are the two photographs which i have taken in my or one with the left one with the digital flexible uniroscope that is flexc and this is with the fusen i think uh, to to me to me uh, as a routine endo urologist it it uh, works very well there i don't find uh, great difference except um, as very well known that if somebody is dealing with the malignancy it may make a huge difference but for the stone disease i don't think it uh, the vision makes a, a huge difference how about the clinical performance of the single use scopes there has been several studies comparing clinical outcomes of procedure between the reusable and single use scopes and they have generally found out comparable clinical performance and surgical outcomes when comparing the reusable scopes however further studies must be done uh, investigating the surgeon surgeon ergonomics as well as other patient factors the most important part of what i feel person is a, of a, a single use scope is very lightweight uh, the weight of a fusion single single use scope is hardly 177 grams as compared to the other so they are very lightweight so if somebody is uh, performing two or three or four cases endo urological cases in a day definitely it makes a huge difference when the weight of the scope is less so uh, but uh, further investigation has to be done on on this coming to the last part of my topic that is cost analysis i think this is the most important uh, topic uh, all of you know that the overall cost of reusable scope must consider three main parameters the cost purchase the repair and sterilization in a recent series reported that uh, the new conventional flexible uretroscope that is flexes flexes by carlstad would cost about 13000 uh, dirham in us dollars if i have to if i have to talk about in um, in uae in dirhams uh, digital scope will cost about 100000 dirhams whereas in whereas fiber optic scope will cost about 160 to 80000 dirhams whereas we have to consider other uh, factors also like sterilization uh, leak testing and all these things this will cost another 100 to uh, 200 uh, dollars in that when disposable scope is being considered the repair and processing is not into uh, question at all because this is a one time procedure once we finish the procedure we, we we put the scope into the garbage so the main factor being considered for the single use scope is always a purchase cost initial purchase cost and this purchase cost is mainly influenced by the generation of a disposable scope and by the business contract with the manufacturer so if i have to uh, say about my uh, practice Uh, as i said if the fib, if the fiber optic flexible uretroscope is costing 60 to 80000 dirhams and uh, uh, the single use scopes uh, is costing about 2500 dirhams so i would get about 25 uh, single use scopes in the same purchase of a single use, in a reusable scope and which is actually the life average life of a uh, of a reusable scope so in my practice uh, the cost there is always the cost uh, benefit of using a, re, of a disposable scope as compared to single use scopes this is very nice uh, paper where in the, uh, the the economic implications of reusable flexible digital uretroscope cost benefit analysis wherein the permanent digital flexes flexes c uretroscope and a single lithoview scope were compared between 160 cases over the one year period and uh, in which eight uh, reusable scopes were required uh, uh, repair and the author demonstrated that the uh, per case cost of a reusable scope was about 848 dollars uh, 800 848 dollars whereas for the single uh, single use scope it was about 860 dollars which was very comparable but the most important thing is to to have a reusable scope economically viable minimum procedures to be done is about 99 procedures so more than 100 procedures has to be done for the reusable scope to become economically viable so the conclusion was that the digital uretroscopes are the latest trend in evolution of urology and um, institution with a high volume cases may find reusable scopes cost beneficial otherwise the the institutions wherein the cases are not that high i think a single scope a single use scope is still beneficial there is a huge debate uh, between uh, in uh, world congress endo urology 2019 i think most of you must have visited in abu dhabi wherein uh, disposable and flexible uretroscopes were uh, discussed and those who uh, the, the the author who talked up for the reusable scope was talking about the smaller diameter of the scopes best visualization multi use for example malignancies and stones they are more durable 
less ecological impact. I haven't talked about ecological impact, but it has a less ecological impact according to the, the presenter and cost effective in high volume centers. Whereas those for disposable uh, says that it is the, the miniaturized is in, pro, is in process, although the initial uh, diameter is 9.5 inch, but already Pucin has come with 7.5 inch. The image quality evaluation is not standardized and it is very personal. Uh, it has a better deflection, better ergonomics. It is very lightweight and easy to maneuver and comparable ecologi ecological impact. So to uh, conclude, has the dust settled yet? Whether what to do, whether to use, whether to take a reusable or whether to use a disposable scope. I think the, uh, the answer to the question is it is not settled yet, but definitely it is in, it is in process of settling towards single use zero trust scopes. The disposable devices are already a reality and will progressively become standard as the manufacturing price falls. There is a healthy competition in the market and maybe every six months, one year, new companies come up, coming up with the disposable scopes and as the price will fall, definitely everybody would like to use it. According to me, it is ideal to use it in lower polar stones or lower polar pathologies, large stone burden, uh, the disposable scopes score significantly high. Academic centers may find a place uh, for the residency training. And finally, no instrument is failure proof or backup uh, and backup device, single, single use or a disposable should always be available in case the second scope is required to finish the case. Thank you very much for your patient here today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for this uh, really uh, comprehensive review uh, on, on uh, the comparison between the reusable and single use urethroscopy. I uh, personally enjoyed a lot uh, this uh, presentation. Um, I, I'm working in a tertiary center in Riyadh. We do around 500 to 700 flexible urethroscopy per year. Uh, we have a residency program. We have around 15 residents uh, in training. So uh, we have shifted recently over the last like two years to almost four stones to the single use uh, uh, urethroscopies for, uh, for, uh, for stone management. We have digital, we have fiber optic. We keep them for like tumors, for uh, consultants with experience to use them. But we uh, uh, let the resident do uh, most of the cases of stones with the single use. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, they are introducing like a new quality certificates for the institutions uh, like GCI or uh, other international qualification. We are not allowed to use SIDEX anymore in sterilization of the instruments. That's why uh, we send our uh, uh, urethroscopes to the uh, uh, CSSD units and uh, they came most of the time damaged uh, with problems. So after introduction of the single use urethroscopy, uh, we are always, um, I mean, we have available scopes more, all the time. Uh, we can do, uh, as Dr. Yugesh said, uh, we can do more than uh, a case uh, in the list because uh, we don't wait for a sterilization or avail availability of the scopes. So I think uh, the introduction of the single use urethroscopy has added a lot to the flow of cases and number of cases that can be done uh, per day. Now uh, we come to the uh, cost effectiveness, which is the most important uh, part of, of this presentation. I agree with Dr. Yugish totally. Uh, uh, if the, the center is very busy uh, center, uh, it might be not that much cost effective to have single use only. Uh, so yeah. it's better to have both if, if possible. Uh, yeah. But still, I think if we compare the sterilization, the damage, the, uh, the number of cases that you do, at the end, I, I believe that single use urethroscopy might be more cost effective than the reusable ones. Uh, I don't know if, if you Definitely. agree with me, Dr. Yogesh. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like uh, you said, you work in a very high volume centers, like 500 and 700 flexible urotoscopies in a year is very high volume. So if you if you go by a literature, I think in this high volume, it may not be very feasible because the, the cost of a single uro single use urotoscope may be uh, very significantly high. But uh, yes, yeah. with the, if you see the other factors, like for example, in my practice, in, um, in a private practice, wherein we do about 200, 150 to 200 cases uh, per year, 
I think uh, it's it's the most suitable and most ideal ideal uh, scope to be used rather than reusable. And particularly when uh, we have uh, more than one consultants using the scopes, there is always chance of damage. So uh, this is the most feared uh, complication. Like uh, we have uh, you know damage in less than five cases in one case in one scope. So I mean this this is the really a boon for us having a single U zero telescope. Uh, okay. Regarding the regarding the uh, uh, sterilization, regarding the sterilization, I think there is no standard sterilization still described in the literature. It's very individualized. It's very the depending upon the uh, infectious committee of the hospital how they recommend. Uh, but uh, it has been found out that if we send the scope to the CSSD, definitely the damage is more, and uh, that is not recommended. And uh, at the same time, the Cydex or Polysef um, uh, sometimes can damage or sometimes can is harm to the patients. So there is no, I think, a foolproof answer how to sterilize the reusable scopes, and that uh, I, I think there uh, the single-use scopes uh, significantly score. No doubt about that. Agree. Yes, agree. Uh, I do. I, um, I don't know if Dr. Carlos is still with us. We want to hear from him his experience in single-use yes. urotroscopies. How frequent do you use uh, single-use urotroscopy in your practice? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All the cystoscopy in, in my hospital is made with the single use, uh, huh? but in Mexico is uh, is an opportunity to 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 make the the, the single use because you know don't use only one time. Maybe use another in, in two times uh, with the single use <laughs> because in Mexico is very difficult to to, to to, uh, to approach the on only one ultrascope for one patient. So you, you use the single use more than once? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. OK, that's very interesting. Um, I think um, uh, most of the, of the questions that has been sent has been answered by our uh, moderators and panelists. Uh, and uh, we reach to the conclusion of this uh, of this webinar. I would like to thank our distinguished speakers, Dr. Carlos Martinez Arroyo from Mexico and Dr. Yigish Bandari from Abu Dhabi for joining our webinar. Uh, it was uh, uh, an honor uh, uh, for me uh, to, to be with you tonight uh, and we uh, gained a lot of information uh, uh, that I hope it will help us in our daily practice. Uh, I would like also to thank the, uh, our colleagues from Pussy Medical for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to be uh, here tonight and looking forward for more uh, and more uh, meetings, scientific meetings. And I hope that after the uh, end of this COVID-19 uh, era, we will be able to meet physically and uh, invite uh, you to visit us in Saudi Arabia and to visit you in your centers. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, it was a pleasure for us to have you uh, with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. And it's really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And I have a a really uh, pleasure to compare this uh, share this talk with us. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. See you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.